Hello, welcome to Did You Watch Survivor Last Night? This is a podcast uh, about reality TV shows and friendship. My name is Jake Scheidel. Each week I talk about a certain reality show with my best friend Thomas Powell. My buddy Thomas, how you doing? I'm good, man. Happy to be on the show. <laughs> this and every week. No, just this, um, just this week. Just every other week you're like, eh. Normally, Take it or leave it. normally I can't be arsed, but this week I'm into it. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so, Thomas, I got a question for you. Did you watch Survivor last night? You know, uh, I did. Yeah. Uh, so, this week's episode was called "The Jocks versus the Pretty People." Which I believe is three episodes now in a row in which it's not an actual quote from one of the contestants. Oh, no one said that? I, at one point, Aubrey said, it's, there's jocks and there's pretty people or something like that. But nobody said it's the jocks versus the pretty people. And it also wasn't the plot of the episode, which we will get into. Get ready. Um, but I'm, yeah, nobody said that. I'm sorry, what was that? You just said a thing like it was a... A phrase that people use, and when it what? isn't the blood of what? the episode. Did I say the blood of the episode? Yes, you did. Did you mean the meat of the episode? <laughs> I think I said plot. I think I meant to say plot. I don't know why I would have said blood. Yeah, I I don't know. Are <laughs> are you are you a Dracula? Is there something you need to tell me? I, I think I think it's the most Freudian of slips because, as we all know. Sigmund Freud was also a vampire. Yeah, Sigmund Freud. Also, Fre I, I say also because I am a vampire. Sigmund Freud, Dracula, <laughs> it is a matter of historical record. Don't look it up, because we're telling you. Yeah, this is an internet show. You calling us liars? everything is right on the internet. Yeah, fucking come on the <laughs> show and defend yourself, person listening. Uh, so this episode starts off in camp, well... Technically, this episode starts with Jeff's previously on Survivor recap. And then the actual episode, the new episode, starts with Scott doing an impression of Jeff Probst saying, Previously on Survivor. <laughs> then he does, he does a pretty great Probst impression. It's, it's possible to be happy and sad at the same time. Um, I'm, look, I... It's funny. I, I know that uh, we have uh, a habit of, of telling people... To not do things that we do, and I'm gonna keep that up, Scott. No, I know that I know Scott. I know that you couldn't have known, and uh, <laughs> you are a basketball man, so I am inclined to like you. But uh, yes, stay in your fucking lane, okay? There's one person that does Jeff Probe's impressions, and it's me. <laughs> oh, Jeff. <laughs> Scott, I will cut your fucking throat if you ever do a Jeff Probe's impression again. Look. Scott, I know that this was filmed like six months to a year before we ever started this podcast, but you should have known. I mean, really. You should have known. <laughs> Can't see the forest for the trees or whatever. Yeah, that's the exact metaphor of this situation. A different cliche. Is. That If that cliche doesn't work, throw a, throw a one of your choice in there. Throw a wet blanket on it, Scott. Throw a wet blanket on your Jeff Probst impression. Yeah. Is that what that it's my way, My way or the highway. Mm-hmm. Life is a highway, and Jeff Probst's impression is going to ride it. Yep, and I'm, Thomas is Jeff Probst's impression, I am, specifically. I am not walking on sunshine right now. <laughs> ja, Grandpa Joe says he doesn't feel very powerful. And then Scott fucking uh, Sinbad over here does another impression. He does an impression of Forrest Gump. Yeah, that, I said Sinbad, like, Sinbad does impressions. Does Sinbad do impressions? Sinbad is not known for his impressions. I don't know, I don't know why, why didn't you go with, like, uh, Frank Caliendo or somebody like that? I don't know. I, like, I was gonna make the, uh, joke that he's an impressionist. They couldn't think of the name of one impressionist comedian other than Sinbad, apparently. Uh, see, and uh, I have a similar dilemma because I was going to make a joke about an impressionist painter, but I can't think of oh. one off the top of my head. Um, you know, you know, how there's like a sometimes somebody will refer to somebody as skinny fat, where they're like, you know, they're like a thinner person, but they're not like 
you they clearly Fit. don't exercise that much. Uh, I'm dumb mm-hmm. smart. Or smart, <laughs> smart dumb, I should say. <laughs> like an iRobot. You know that, that, that exchange that Will Smith and whoever the girl in iRobot was? Um, he's like, you're the dumbest smart person I know. And she's like, you're the smartest dumb person I know. You know what? It wasn't an exchange in which they both said that. One of them said that earlier, and then later when like it all worked out for the Fresh Prince, she was like, you're pretty smart for a dumb person. Yeah. It was, uh, it's it was a pretty good movie. It was, yeah. It, you know what? Honestly, uh, it is pretty good. I was, I was hanging out with my friends. Yeah, it's, it's honestly not bad. <laughs> yeah, I was hanging out with my, one of my friends uh, at, when I, I was down in, uh, in Fort Wayne this past weekend, and we were at, like, apparently Fort Wayne, Indiana is one of the only places that still has, like, like video-ish stores or whatever. Like, I was just at this place <laughs> called Mega Replay, and right next to each other there was iRobot. First of all, great name for a video rental store. Yeah. But uh, it was it was right night or they had um, I am Legend and I Robot next to each other and my friend Brian went <gasps> which one of these is better and I was like well I Robot obviously he's like yep that's obviously, the correct yeah. answer because I am Legend <laughs> is garbage. <laughs> um, have you ever read the book I Robot or the si- series of stories I Robot? Uh, I I've read some Asimov I I haven't read that one uh, I assume there's a part in it where uh, Will Smith's character does say oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Will Smith is a big part of that book. As, um, yeah, Asimov really wanted to punctuate the drama of that scene by going, "Oh hell no! <laughs> I understand that Will Smith isn't going to be born for like another 50 years, um, but I have a, a premonition that this person will exist and then be in a movie that has very little to do with these stories. Oh, that it was, was, uh, it was Br- good. Bridget Moynihan, by the way. I didn't look Bridget that up, Moynihan. I just remembered. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to make a joke that the woman, the, the female lead in iRobot was the female lead who played the robot in Ex Machina, but I could not remember that actress's name. That's Alicia Vikander. Get, I did not know that name. Get me on your bar trivia team. I'm actually quite good at it. <laughs> um, a better joke would have been the two stars of iRobot were Will Smith and the female lead Oscar Isaac. Because he's, he's pretty popular now. I feel like so this, this is a podcast. Topical. I think we should we should really expand the uh, the sort of like byline of our podcast where it's it's a podcast about reality shows and friendship and jokes we could have made. <laughs> also, hey, remember 30 seconds to five minutes ago yeah. when we were talking about this? I thought of a good joke for that. Us Monday mo- morning quarterbacking our own jokes. <laughs> See, this is why I do stand-up and not improv. I think of good jokes later and then I write them down. I can't. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, though. Well, I mean, that's why I have so many notes. And also because you're not the worst. Yeah, my little brother does improv for his college. Oh, Ian! And no, I think that's really funny. <laughs> we'll bring him on. Please, the show. please grow out of this, Ian. Please let this be a phase. <laughs> I think he will. That kid does everything. He was in. The, he was in his school senate last year as a freshman. What a great! Is he a freshman or a junior or a sophomore? I mean. I think he's a sophomore. He's one of those. He's 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 not a senior. I know that. Ooh, I should really know more about my siblings. Happy siblings day. <laughs> All right. Um, we're pretty far into this, and we, I read like three lines of notes. So let's get back into the show. Um, so Beauty and Braun are aligned at this point, I guess, and plan to split the vote until they flush uh, Neil's idol, R.I.P. Neil. Um, not necessarily. They don't know if Neil's idol exists or not. So, you know, great plan. Then Aubrey compares this whole group of people to high school uh, and then says, the jocks and the pretty people age and get overripe and eventually the misfits get their revenge. It's, it's a fine metaphor. I get it. And you're right. It is like high school. Yeah, there is a movie about that, about about the nerds getting their revenge. A couple what, of them, actually. What, what would that move? Was that um, Police Academy? Is that what that is about? No, idiot. It was Caddyshack. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, with everyone gathered together around the fire, Jason talks about his daughter's autism. And so now you really feel for Jason. And uh, that's, his, that's his winner's edit, you know? I, w- I would say winner's edit, but he he's not going to win. <laughs> no, he won't. Um, he says in a talking head that it's not meant as a strategic play. Like somebody just legitimately asked him about it and he is more interested in 
autism awareness, which is great. Like, that's a very noble cause, and I'm glad that they put that in the episode. Yeah, it was good. There was a weird point where he didn't know what word to use and used... At one point he says, and like, and autism is more popular than you would think. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know what he meant, but that's a very awkward way to phrase it. I have, I have a joke um, about being diabetic, and I specify that I have type 1. Uh, and so I say, I have to specify type 1 because type 2 is more popular. And then I kind of cut myself and go, eh, common. I should say common. People aren't too excited about it. It's a big laugh. Uh, maybe this podcast isn't the greatest format for my stand-up set. Um, then they cut to a talking head with Sydney, in which she says, you have to ask yourself who you can beat. Fucking winner's edit. Mm-hmm. I, I read something online, I think it was like an AV Club comment or something, that apparently um, Jeff Probst will like, not play up the season as much when a woman ends up winning. And since this season is a little more downplayed, that's the theory. So maybe it's, uh, maybe it's our good bud, Sydney. Yeah. Just not. I'm sorry. I was distracted. (laughs) Sydney's going to win. Sure. Yeah. Um, so the reward challenge, uh, uh, there's a schoolyard pick, uh, for teams, five on five. Then they play a game of basketball. That would be great. Just kidding. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it would and, be uh, great. And but... Aubrey didn't pick Scott. What a blunder. What an idiot. Um, they have to transfer one person from a platform in the water to another platform using two alternating stepping stone kind of things, which the rest of the tribe is, or not t- tribe, but uh, people are holding. And then everybody has to climb on a very narrow tower. At the end, the winning team gets ice cream that they have to have at the camp, which is kind of smart, actually. Because it's like, you can't really talk about strategy if, if you're still in the camp, you know? I get, like, wanting to have something sweet when you've been deprived of it. Mm-hmm. But if you're out in the hot sun all the time, you know what doesn't sound very good? When it's you eat a lot of it and it's sitting in your belly all day, dairy, dairy does not yeah. sound great. Yeah, um, I have to wonder how their stomach is affected by like the lack of food and like the constant dehydration because they're like, oh, I was so full, but like for me to get full after ice cream, it's like I gotta have like a full bowl of ice cream or two. For them, it might be like three scoops of ice cream and they're like no. No more. I am. I am donezo. I. The only way for me to find out is if I go on Survivor. Jeff Probst hit me up. I'll play bananas. I'll fucking destroy Johnny Bananas in Final Tribal Council. I. Uh, I also wonder how how sweet that would taste. Just if you're not like, if you've gone a while without eating sweet things, you know, desserts or mm-hmm. whatever. I feel like it would hurt your teeth. I thought you, I thought you were going to say, when you don't deserve it. You, when, when you're deprived of them because you've been a terrible person and you deserve it. You deserve the pain. Uh, but I, I, have to, I, I think it would hurt your teeth. Because I remember um, Jake and I, uh, for a while, went to the, the same Catholic church. And uh, they had a Vietnamese uh, priest. And he described oh. when he first came to America eating some sort of dessert and it being so sweet that it like hurt his mouth. Like he couldn't process how sweet yeah. it was because he had just been eating rice or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. This is veered into, into rather uninteresting territory, <laughs> but I, I, I am, glad I was, I was really surprised when you said that we at one point went to the same church. Cause I'm like, I don't remember that ever happening, but Ass- I know, I know what church you're maybe. talking. Assumption. Yeah. yeah. Assumption in Belmont, Michigan, um, yeah, we went there for like a year when we first moved to Rockford, and then we went to Our Lady of Consolation in Rockford, Michigan, which was huge. It was big, and then they doubled the size of it after being us being there for a while. And now yeah. my parents go to a completely different church in Lowell, Michigan. Wow, you were right. This is very uninteresting. Yeah, they go to some place called St. Patrick's now. Shout out, like, pa- down the street for, from my grandparents. It's weird. 
Hey, though, shouts out Father Boo, though. Yeah. Father Boo always... I'm not, re- cool. I'm not religious, but Father Boo seemed cool. Yeah. Religious people can be cool. I'm not saying they can. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying I, I, I'm not predisposed I to... to like... I'm not predisposed to like him. Yeah. Um... So oh, Julia uh, and what? Aubrey. Sorry, sorry. What? One more thing. Uh, I'm really glad that we're covering balance challenges. The show. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, cool rebrand. <laughs> I think. I think it's kind of necessary though because you've got Scott Pollard, a fucking NBA center, on the show. You can't have like a ton of physical challenges because he's going to destroy every single one of them, and balance is a little more even for. No ma- like, no matter your body type, I, is what I'm trying to say. It, it, um, it makes sense. Uh, somebody in the AV Club comments uh, had a theory on why they've been these sorts of challenges that made a lot of sense to me, which is that after, with the general decay of health and with after what happened with Caleb and that challenge, mm-hmm. I think they decided to scale things back a little bit. Because nobody's going to nobody's gonna exhaust themselves. Nobody's going to get, like, heat stroke again standing on yeah. a thing for a while right Pro- probably not anyway i mean they I mean, could but it, it, it yeah. minimizes the risk yeah um so julia and aubrey are t- uh captains and they are also the first ones to be transferred um on the little stepping stools julia's team gets a hang of it immediately and also has an nba center on it so you know Pretty strong dude there. Uh, Aubrey's team, uh, less good. Like, real real bad. They switch out the people that are transferring, like, two or three times and still can't make it more than two steps. Um, so, obviously, Julia, Scott, Ty, Nick, and Debbie win. And Aubrey says that she's feeling like she's making bad decision after bad decision. Losers edit. Or, alternately, winners, winners edit. edit. Oh, Aubrey, so down on her luck. Way to come back. Way to rally, Aubrey. Yeah, uh, um, she, she mentions that she thinks that her problems are snowballing. And uh, mm-hmm. for, fortunately for her, that it didn't extend to tribal, you know. Spoilers. I was thinking um, it might be fun... This is a production thing for our podcast that maybe we don't need to talk about on air. But I think it would be fun if in future episodes we, like, watched up until Tribal Council. And then we watched Tribal Council while we recorded the podcast so we could have a genuine reaction. That would be a great idea, and I think it would be interesting, but I can't. I can't! Sorry! Can't <laughs> right. do it. Well, cool idea. Uh, I guess we'll never do it. I can't watch um, an entire episode of Survivor and not see who gets voted off Fuck that. I know. Sorry. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> it's the anticipation. Um, or we could just, like, play it in the background and talk about it as it's happening. No, and that... then we can have decently linked episodes. That's even worse. <laughs> uh, so while they're eating the ice cream, Ty says that he wishes they could share. Such a nice guy. Winners at it. Um, Michelle says that she believes Jason thinks he's in charge. Could be. Um... Yeah. During their ice cream social, Scott talks about his parents. Mom is in assisted living. His dad died when he was 16. Uh, so it's real sad. And He wants extra money to help out his other family members who are not yeah. are not well off the way that he is from his NBA yeah. career. He says that his brothers chose religion and family. Well, he chose the NBA. And I got to be honest, like, very touching story. But I would absolutely make the same choice Scott Pollard did. Ball is life. Those... <laughs> Ball is life. That's it. That's like I have two. What is it? Credos of my life. Mm-hmm. Ball is life. Number one. Number two. Don't skip leg day. You can't skip leg day. Like I. I am, that's all. That's it. I am one hundred percent on board. But my third one. I have a third one. It's yes. What wouldn't I do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> Julia and uh, Julia thinks that she and Scott could work well together. Um, after their ice cream social, the tribe gets back into the normal routine of things. Scott, Nick, and Jason are hanging out and discuss a, pop- a possible all girls alliance. And should they be worried about that? Uh, as I wrote in my do- in my notes, you done fucked up, boys. 
That, what? uh... Never mention it at all Carl's Alliance! Move. Never mention it! Don't give them the idea! They shot themselves in the foot on that one. Why, why would you go uh, up to someone... And, why would you go up to someone and say, Wow, it, would really, it sure would hurt us if you did this thing. Are you guys doing it? Because if they're not, <laughs> oh, then you've weren't. given well, them the idea. idea. That, um... Have you seen the show Friday Night Tykes? Or ha have you heard of it? Neither. Okay. It's it's really good. It's on it's on Netflix. I would highly suggest it. It's about youth football in Texas. Um, and I was watching an episode today, and it was, like, leading up to this huge game. Last game of the season, two undefeated teams, and one of the coaches saying to these eight- and nine-year-olds, like, hey, we can beat this team. If we don't win, it's not because they beat us. It's because we beat ourselves, which is exactly what Nick and the guys do once they bring it up to Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, so the boys decide to get out Aubrey and Debbie, split the vote between the two of them. Uh, Nick says he doesn't believe in all-girls alliance is happening, but then Julia shows up and they walk off together and he talks to her. Sydney calls Nick the most indiscreet person on the island because he walked like 50 feet away from her to talk to Julia. Like, like there was the beach, then there was the tree line, and they just walked up to the tree line where they could still be seen. And it wasn't like they were talking in, in hushed tones or anything. Right, he, he yeah. Didn't, he didn't even try to modulate his voice at all for it. He just mm. was, essentially was like, oh, cool, I'm... 50 feet away, this is an appropriate distance. She's I never like, going to suspect anything. I like that as soon as uh, Dr. President gets voted out, it, it becomes obvious how terrible a survivor player Nick actually is. Like, he's bad at making alliances, he's bad at making connections. Um, fine, fine at challenges, I guess. He won one. Um, but, like, he doesn't even, like... He's not, he's not discreet. As she said, he's the most indiscreet person on the island. It's and hilarious. As, as Debbie says, too, at one point in the episode, overconfidence is a weakness. And he has... That's an, that's an issue for him because he... He seems like, uh, like a narcissist and he can't see his own faults. So he's supremely confident while he's pissing all of these people off. Yeah. Oh, man. It... it yeah. It, it, we'll, we'll get into his idiocy. Um, Sydney then confronts Scott, Jason, and Nick, uh, and Jason's like, hey, yo, uh, calm down, uh, let's go get some water, then tells her that Nick came up with the, th the theory of an all-girls alliance, uh, which isn't true, <laughs> which is not true, it was Jason who, Jason, or was it Jason or Scott who, I came think, up with that? I think Scott mentioned it first, but I think him and Jason were the ones telling Nick about it. Yeah, um, it's obvious Sydney doesn't totally believe him, uh, she gets pissed, and then in a talking head says, irritated Sydney will blow up your whole game, uh, and she says, plan is Debbie or Aubrey, but if one of the guys gotta go, one of the guys gotta go. So. And then in another talking head, she says, this is not my beautiful house, this is not my beautiful <laughs> wife. Uh... What I was, what I was going to say after that little talking head, before your talking heads diversion, uh, winner's edit for Miss Sydney Gillen, I think is her last name. Sydney last um, name withheld. <laughs> uh, Thomas, I've got some breaking news. Breaking news. We are on the scene right now. Uh, it's time for a Real World Roundup. Real World Roundup! The real world will be rounded up in these next five minutes. Uh, last week, Jenna, remember Jenna? She was told that she would be unable to complete this mission because of her strained neck or whatever's wrong with her. So they decide to leave it up to the roommates to decide if, she want, if they want her to stay or not. Obviously, she's going home, right? Everybody hates her. But guess what? No, she's not. They let her stay. What? I don't know. Why? What does it? I mean, people don't get voted off on this show, right? People just hang out. I mean, sometimes people get voted out. 
uh, if they're like particularly awful. But the whole one, the whole point of this season is if you can't complete the mission, you're going home. Two, everyone hates her, and three, a bunch of people were really amped to get her out of there. But then somebody was like, "No, we should let her stay because she's here already," or whatever the reasoning was. I was like, "Dumb." Her in the background, Pee Wee style, going, "I say we let her stay." <laughs> Uh, that falsetto voice person has a point. <laughs> I don't remember that roommate, but I think they have a point. Um, then, guess what? You know how she was already super awful and racist? She's also terribly homophobic. Man, um, who could have seen that coming? Uh, she says that gay oh, sex disgusts her. Sorry. What? Classic real world. I, classic I'm not, not going to do it as much as I did last week, but I just want to point out how classic that is. Uh, some classic real world, honestly. Um, they did do a good job of casting in antagonists this season beyond, like, you stole my man, or whatever the antagonist is usually. Uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Bar- it's like a... It's not important. Yeah. Uh, Moving on. So she's- <laughs> I, I, I will say uh, about this show that I don't watch... Um, mm-hmm. I think it's a little cheap, because I'm sure that they do slightly extensive interviews, like they vet these people a little bit. Um, oh, absolutely, yeah. So they probably know if they're a racist or a homophobe. It's a little cheap to put them in there, because you're making someone else deal with that, and that's not fun. Yeah, but from what I've heard of the audition process, um, and from like people being on the show and people who've just like, gone far in the audition or the I, I don't know what it's called exactly but like they've been near the cast but never were actually cast um they're looking for uh genuine people who like hold their beliefs dear and um are are willing to fight for them or or whatever um so yeah it, like in 2016 i can kind of see or 2015 i think this was filmed in but i can see why you would say that but the fact of the matter is, people still do feel that way, so it's an honest reflection of um, where where people's heads are at. Granted, six of the seven people who live in the house aren't racist homophobes, so, you know, maybe maybe that's the ratio of greater America. I suppose My you did... My favorite I, Six Flag Park. I also suppose, like you mentioned, they do, if they really want to, have the option to, to shit can these people and get them out. Yeah. Yeah, they they can. Um, they didn't this time, though. They didn't this time for whatever reason. I I don't know. They just keep teasing us with the possible el- elimination, and that's really exciting. And then every episode, it's like, now we're all gonna stick around. What that, else of that, note? Um. So I, I don't know if you heard me say she thinks she says in front of Chris, who is pansexual, that gay sex is disgusting. Cool. Um, Dion, you know, everybody's favorite person, Dion meets some girl named Kia, which is a car brand, at a party, and they hook up in their suite? I think they're staying in a hotel, so that's a suite. Uh, Kayla gets real jealous, uh, but won't admit it, because she's better than that, I don't know. I feel like these two people deserve each other, I hate them both, and I hope they get together forever, and never are on my TV again. I legitimately don't remember anything about Kayla. Kayla's the girl with the golden pussy. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I don't know why I they, didn't remember that. They, they, she and Dion hooked up in her and Jenna's room a couple episodes ago. Oh, and Jenna, Jenna wasn't too happy about that. Because yeah. she was trying to sleep, yeah. Um, so then Jenna confides in Dean, who is a black person, so she's not racist, okay? So stop saying she's racist because she has had a conversation with a person of color. I talked to a black person and didn't even say outwardly mean things to them. (laughs) Uh, She says that maybe people don't understand when she's kidding because she is conservative and Southern or something like that, Uh, and people get real mad at her. Uh, And Dean says, this is the first time I've ever taken a note on any episode of The Real World. And I I just wanted to because this quote was so funny. 
Uh, Dean says, I have a dry sense of humor, too, but I don't get that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Laying down the law. Uh, Dean is great. Dean is, like, the one person who seems tolerable on the entire cast, and that's why he's my favorite, and that's why he's barely in any episode. <laughs> um, later, they discover someone has leaked some info about the cast to the internet, uh, and it talks about how Jenna is a racist homophobe. So they got to deal with that now. Do they do they find out who did it? Mm, no, they leave that as a cliffhanger. But apparently, Chris on Twitter when that episode aired said that he did it. I don't know if he was messing around, uh, but I guess we'll find out. It would make sense. The next episode good of you, the good real for you, world. Good for you, Chris. It would make sense for you to do it. Yeah. And then there was like this debate like, hey, you you shouldn't be doing that. That's somebody's personal view. And like, yeah, but also like, you know, if you're, uh, if you think that way, you should probably be able to defend yourself. It's my, also, it's, have... it's, it's Chris's personal view, if he indeed did that, that Jenna is a racist and a homophobe, so. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when she said that racist and homophobic stuff? Ghost both yeah. ways. Ghost both ways. Um, that has nothing to do with anything. Uh, ghost just sounds like the word ghost, and I'm a big fan of ghosts. Not real ghosts, just fictional ghosts. Okay. I am only a fan of Slimer. Slimer is the only <laughs> ghost I am a fan of. I, honestly, I would say I ain't afraid of no ghosts, but actually, I am super afraid of ghosts. I don't know why. What, what, what do ghosts have against me? What are we talking about? Why am I bringing this up? I mean, you and both, you and both, you and ghosts are both of the opinion that Bustin makes you feel good, so, I, you know. True. Um, so at the immunity challenge, they have to balance on a perch while holding a handlebar that is above their head. Probes tells them once the challenge starts that they will be tempted with food. And he asks them, hey, do you, do you feel safe? Uh, cause if you feel safe, you've got 10 seconds to drop and eat this food. This is, <laughs> I, I feel that we haven't gotten enough of Jeff Probes being, a uh, dick to the uh, to the contestants, which is one of my favorite things generally. So this was this was uh, this was a breath of fresh air. I have to say. Yeah. Well, I I don't know if you remember us talking about it, but you were complaining in one of the earlier episodes that uh, there wasn't enough Jeff Probes in the episode, and I was like, well, yeah, they've got like eighteen people or sixteen people, however many were still on the show, and now they're down to nine or ten in this episode so jeff's got a little more time to be a dick to him yeah we can see the real time. star of the show the the one that we all paid to see t jeff probst laughing they yeah, get married yeah that <laughs> and combined persons the pre <laughs> yeah they uh that's their uh dragon ball z fusion <laughs> <laughs> uh so jeff is like i'm gonna go get the food once I bring it back, you've got 10 seconds to leave the challenge and eat this food. But Julia drops before the food arrives, so she doesn't get any. Poor Julia. <laughs> I so Literally, like, five seconds before Jeff comes back, and Jeff looks at her and goes, Oh, well, I'm sorry <laughs> I missed that. Right. <laughs> Julia, you don't get any food. And he's, like, smirking the entire time. <laughs> he's like, I, <laughs> I want people to think that I'm their friend, but I am not their friend. I am... I would call myself their frenemy. Um, Four pizzas, six <laughs> hot dogs. Don't look at Julia. Don't. <laughs> Shame. She does not get any. <laughs> she like. <laughs> even like. I'm the sit out bench. <laughs> she, she was on one end of the bench next to Jeff Probst, and the four people who ate the food were on the complete opposite side of the bench. Eating very loudly. It's Scott, yeah. J Scott oh, and Jason. So Scott, Jason, Joe, and Michelle all left for the food. Just loudly eating. As <laughs> oh, this is lip smackingly good, Julia. You know oh, what I would? So good. I love these wings, Julia. I can't believe you're missing out on these cold drinks. That's my favorite thing. Is so Jeff, tasty. Jeff just having like Jeff not feeling like saying the two what the two pictures of things were on that tray, so he just says <laughs> and cold drinks. 
It's it's water and another glass of water. It could be anything, yeah. <laughs> Maybe um, it's the purple stuff from that Sunny D commercial. Explain that. I don't know what that is. Uh, the old Sunny D commercial where these excited children run to the fridge, uh, where they, uh, and uh, one of them says, "What do you want to drink? Soda? Some purple stuff? Oh, Sunny! <laughs> oh, Sunny D!" Um. Have you ever seen that YouTube video? It's 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 got to be pretty old by now. Um, I don't even know if it was on YouTube, but it's a video on the internet um, of this dude just like showing off his fridge, and it's got like beverages Mr. upon yeah, beverages. Mi- Mr. Mr. Shy City, who is also that- very was also very afraid of a bug one time. Oh, is he a is he a YouTube star? He was like a really early one. Like I remember, I remember uh, I found out who he was because uh, Video Gum. The now, uh, yeah. now unfortunately deceased uh, R. best, P. best pop, the best pop culture blog that has ever existed uh, mm-hmm. would occasionally update it whenever he had posted something and be like, "Hey, okay. this awesome guy posted this thing." That's probably where I originally saw it. Then, um, God, that video is so great. That video is especially great that. because I, I, that's like an aspirational video for me. Oh I, yeah, absolutely. See, I, like, a drinks are a status symbol for me, and I want my mini yeah. fridge to be as loaded as possible. I I went to a convenience store earlier to uh, just, like, get some eggs. Um, and, like, I, I went out of my way to get myself a drink that I didn't even drink. Like, I just have it now in my possession. Do you want to know what I have in my mini fridge right now? It's pretty well stocked. Yes, yes. I, I have Dr. Pepper. I have some fresh-squeezed orange juice. I have uh, a naked blue machine smoothie. I have... Uh, some organic kefir, which I'm very excited to drink. Uh, I've got a couple different kinds of beer. I've got, uh, boy. Uh, oh, and I've got two two different kinds of Arizona. I've got an Arizona RX Energy Ooh. and a Mucho Mango. So, like, nice. Two I'm, solid Arizona. I'm, I'm very pleased. Um, in my fridge right now, I've got Founders, uh, I think it's Dirty Bastard, which is now the, the second six-pack I've gotten in a row. That's uh, Founders, which I don't drink very often because, one, I'm not in love with Founders too much. And two, also, there's a lot of really great options in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, also, Dirty Bastard is garbage. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. It's, it's not my favorite. <laughs> I, w- I was looking at it, and I was like, you know, I, if I've ever had this, it's been a long time. I'm not super into scotch ales, but I'll try it. It's fine. Like, I enjoy it as much as I like pretty much any other Founders um, beer. Uh, but, you know... I'm going to pick anything else before that. Uh, so I got that. I got some Mickey's, which is great. Have you ever have you ever had ha- ever had the Mickey's? I look, I'm a Steel Reserve man. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Steel Reserve Bob. Um I like Mickey's. It's it's fine. I'll get you drunk whatever. The what I like about Mickey's is that they have little puzzles under the cap like a Snapple like yeah. in fact and some of them are really easy like a pipe and then a down arrow it's like oh it's piped down and then some of them are just like a bunch of weird crazy symbols that I've never seen before uh, and I have no idea what it means I just really uh, want a poster of you now looking nonplus for Mickey's holding a 40 of Mickey's that just says <laughs> it's fine it'll get you drunk whatever <laughs> uh, so you got Mickey's that beer um I think it's some regular dairy milk and soy milk, I think, is in my fridge. And uh, one of those Sonic energy drinks. That's the that's the uh, drink I got at um, the convenience store I was talking to. Have you had Sonic um, beverages? They're like the little bottles that look shaped like rockets. I have not. They're good. They got a lot of good stuff. They've got an energy one, which is slightly effective. They've got a... Um, immune system one that's green and they've got a vitamin D one which is supposed to make you happy uh, that sounds like some vitamin water level bullshit it's carbonated though which I like cause oh, I'm not saying in terms of taste because I actually I don't mind vitamin water but the idea yeah. that the different vitamin water mixes will do anything different for you oh, is yeah, such garbage yeah it's like here's a lot of sugar and a mango or I'm not hung over anymore mango. because I drank this one vitamin water thanks 50 yeah. cent you, you like, I, I I fell into their trap, you know, of of thinking that 
Triple X did something different than like Refresh or whatever that one is called. Uh, and then I like looked at the nutrition facts. They're like, oh, these are exactly the same. Like one might have more, like fifty percent more vitamin C or something, but not like fifty percent more than the other one. Like fifty percent of your daily total vitamin C. One has a hundred. Yeah. The other has one hundred fifty, which is impossible based on math. But whatever. I don't make vitamin water, so. I'm not a I'm not a liar like Fifty Cent. Yeah, that's why. Uh, never mind. Let's get back into the show. <laughs> we spent a long time talking about beverages we like. Um, Look, uh, we this is a podcast about things we're passionate about. <laughs> and drink drinks most certainly fall under that uh, purview. Oh, yeah. Look, what I'm all I'm saying is I love water. It's so delicious. I, I think I would feel better about your mini fridge just or or fridge uh, from knowing you for so long if you not didn't have bottled water but just had a bunch of glasses of tap water sitting in there. <laughs> so I bought an entire I bought an entire set of glasses and filled it with tap water. Now I can have a nice cold glass of tap water whenever I want. Here's the thing, I like the, the, that's a joke, but also it's entirely true that I love water. I have had multiple former roommates of mine get mad at me for just leaving glasses of water around the apartment. What if I need it later and I don't feel like going all the way over to the sink? It's like, you have seven glasses of water on the coffee table. You do not need that many glasses. But I do. I might be walking past one of them specifically and want to get a glass of water. It's just an extension of that thing where where someone will leave a glass of water uh, next to their bedside so that when when they wake up, they drink it. Like, mm-hmm. And they don't have to go get it's it. This is just that taken hack. to it. Yeah, this is just a further life hack. It's that uh, hacked to its logical extreme. I water is amazing and super un, like you could rate it number one beverage ever to exist, and it would still be underrated. It's perfect. Jake, water how much is it, perfect? How much is Big Tap Water paying you to say this? <laughs> They don't have to pay me anything. Because I, I didn't, I I didn't sign off on that shit. Them. I did not sign off on that shit, okay? <laughs> don't worry. The views expressed on this uh, podcast are not necessarily those of both co-hosts, but they are mine when it comes to water, and that water is great, and I love it. I'm drinking some right now. Never mind, it's, this cup is empty. I was drinking <laughs> some earlier. <laughs> you fucking liar. Now we know the truth. <laughs> yeah, that I drink water real fast. Um, can't keep it in the cup. He loves it so much. <laughs> Some people are alcoholics. I'm a waterholic. Hydroholic. I'm, ar- I'm a hydroholic. <laughs> I think we just found our episode title. Um, so the food arrives. Jason, Scott, and Joe and Michelle drop. Ty says that he was never going to drop, um, and he doesn't want a brain to win. The Nick Nick's dumb mouth says that it's obvious. That the brains are on the chopping block. Nick, I don't think you know how to play Survivor. So Debbie drops, followed by Aubrey and Nick. Then Nick goes on this dumb monologue about how he hopes it won't be him going home now that he's out of the challenge. And he's, like, trying to be all humble and shit. And then Scott, behind him, like, eating the chicken, was like, don't worry. You're, you won't be voted out. And, then, and Nick turns around and whispers back to him. Completely abandoning this humility thing he was trying to do. Like, no, I know. Supremely overconfident. I hate him. I hate him a whole lot. He's been my least favorite player. Him and Debbie have been my least favorite players for the entire time, but... I, I, I dislike Nick a whole lot more than Debbie. He's much worse than Debbie. He is annoying, uh, and he is he's not a good player. At least Debbie has shown some form of competence I think in the Deb- game of Survivor. I think Debbie is slightly more annoying, but she is a much better player. Yes, yeah. I don't like uh, her, but I almost respect her. Also, did you notice yeah. that one of her, it said waitress for her job title this week? Are they just going with a different one every single week? Yeah. See, this is why you need to watch the first episode. She, li- she listed, like, every job she's had, and every time, pretty much every time she goes up, it's Something different, for, obviously from the things she listed, but yeah, it's uh, it's always something different. I think it's it's a funny little settled joke. Good on you, editors. It's a fun little gag. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, um, also, uh, we didn't mention this, but there's something very important uh, that Jeff said during the uh, 
during the immu- or the uh, reward challenge, which is oh, when... Is this a, is this a Probst quote? Uh, yes, Probst quote. What's Probst the quote? quote? Yeah, what is it? It's a Probst quote. Probst I, don't, quote. I, don't, I think I had a thing for this, and I, I forgot yeah. it. Yeah, who cares? Anyway, uh, there is a What's point this where... this quote? Yeah, there is a, this Probst quote. Sponsored by Jeff, sponsored by Jeff Probst. Sponsored, sponsored by Big Tap Water. Sponsored by me, who is in turn sponsored by Jeff Probst. Um, <laughs> in my in my ten uh, step program for being a Probstaholic, he's my sponsor. <laughs> it seems like it seems like a weird way to do that, but it, it's like an immersion therapy kind of thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, Aubrey, when she is balancing, uh, falls off, and uh, Jeff says. Aubrey takes a dump on that one. <laughs> I, I had I had I had to rewind and watch it again because I was I was certain I had that it was just something I imagined. <laughs> There's no uh, Jeff is a professional. He's been doing this for how long? There's no way he would say something like that. Oh no, he did. <laughs> he just had um, he looked up on thesaurus.com fall. And it was like, do you mean autumn or do you mean falling the action? And he was like, falling the action. And it was like, here's 17 synonyms. And he just had a piece of paper with all of those synonyms and wrote them. And he's like, I guess dump is one of them. I gotta say that. I would love to hear his inner monologue as he said that. <laughs> just, just dump, Jeffrey, dumps, dumps. Just, oh, oh no. Oh, fuck, well, I should not have said that. Can't react and let them know I've been beaten. Better just <laughs> pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> Jeffrey, listen to me. Come on this show and explain to us why you use the word dump. At least just shoot us an email. Let us know that you're ashamed and sorry for what you've done. <laughs> and Jeffrey, listen, Jeffrey, our good pal Jeffrey Probst. When you email us about the dump term, be sure to sign it, your pal Jeff Probst. Don't know how many times I have to say this to you. Oh. Of the number of times Jeff Probst has emailed us, he's never signed it, your pal Jeff Probst. It's it's rude is what it is. It's just rude. We say every week, sign it, Jeff Probst. That email, Jeff Probst. By, that email, by the way, did you watch last night at gmail.com. Yeah. Email away, sign it, your pal Jeff Probst. Uh, so it's down to Ty and Sydney in this challenge. Sydney is a professional bodybuilder. And they're chilling, right? Ty asks her if she's feeling numb at all, as he's, like, squirming, and she's like, nope, I'm just peachy. Sydney uh, was flexing literally and figuratively uh, yeah. <laughs> throughout this challenge. She was, it, it was, this was really impressive for both of them. Uh, I will say, even though he said it during, like, the challenge, uh, winner's edit moment for Ty when he says that he's sticking around, and he delivers, like, a little monologue where he says that he, Sydney is a redwood uh, but he is he is bamboo where mm-hmm. nothing nothing can shake him, mm-hmm. uh, and he said that he he mentions being in uh, in camps in Vietnam yeah. and says yeah. that 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 couldn't that couldn't break him and this won't either. Yeah, of all the like winners edits things that happen in this episode for people, that was the best one. Just legitimately a really nice moment. This was a good challenge yeah. all around. It was cool to see two people uh, th- that resilient. Uh, I, just generally very impressive. Yeah. Uh, so 40 minutes pass, and Sydney squirms a little bit. Like, the slightest squirm. If anybody else had squirmed that much throughout any part of the challenge, no one would even question it. But Ty looks over at her. Ty, who has been squirming constantly since the challenge started notices her squirm, and says, you're feeling it, I see it in your face. And then she drops, like, five seconds later, and Ty wins. It was incredible. Good for you, Ty. Neither of yeah. these people were in danger of being eliminated, but it is, it, it's nice for, for Ty to win. Yeah. Uh, Sydney will have her chance. Oh, yeah, I don't doubt that Sydney's going to win another challenge. Didn't you, uh, you predicted that Sydney would win the next elimination challenge. I think I did, you? yeah. I did. So close, so close. So Only close. one of us got points this week, and it was me. We're not to that segment yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you just gotta whet the listener's appetite. Give mm-hmm. them something to look By forward to. What did, it. what did Tom win points on? I don't remember from last week. It was a whole week ago. I prefer to believe that uh, everybody listening is taking diligent notes on our predictions and then watching the show and be like, oh, Tom got a point. 
Listeners, is this show taking a dump in quality? Like we fell off the thing? Yeah, like the, pedi- we, the pedestal we were, that we yeah, fell down. We were, we were listeners. balancing on the good podcast pedestal and we fell off <laughs> mm. or took a dump, as Jeff Probst would say. Took a dump. Um, Nick, oh, they're back at camp and Nick, for whatever reason, tells Aubrey that they're planning to split the vote. Uh, don't don't understand that logic, Nick. No explanation from you will help me understand why you did that. I it, it is stupid. Maybe part of him thought that the other the other non alliance members didn't have any recourse to vote him or anyone else out, and thought that maybe by feeding a little bit of information, if he needed to use Aubrey later on, she would be more predisposed to help him, but that's stupid and wrong. Yeah, he, he was, like, tr- I guess trying to form, like, a secondary, like, fallback alliance. Um, bat, d- dumb, dumb move, Nick. They're just very <laughs> stupid. You, you had it in the bag. Um, so then Sydney approaches Debbie, and Aubrey shows up, and Sydney proposes voting out Nicholas Dickless. That's uh, what I... Call my old roommate Nick. Dick Arms. He, he loves it. Dick Arms, what's up? I don't think you listen to this. Uh, and if you do, why haven't you emailed us? Um, so she says in a talking head, it makes sense for her, Sydney, to keep women in the game. S- clever girl, Sydney. I would say she's like that dinosaur in that dinosaur movie. She's a clever girl. I, d- I do like. Just the general, like, hubris coming back on on Nick and Scott mm-hmm. and Jason for trying to stop, inventing an all-girls alliance in an attempt to stop it. I know, they were, they were, they had it in the back. It's like they, classic, classic you're your own grandfather situation. Yes. Um, so, Sydney, now on a mission, goes up to Michelle and Julia, who are supposedly aligned with Nick, and ask them if they'd be cool voting him out. And they're both kind of like, they make that noise. Uh, And then before they go to Tribal, Jason asks Sydney if she is still cool with the vote, and she kind of coyly goes, yeah. And then takes a sip of water. Smooth move, Sydney. Winner's edit. Um, Thomas, you know what it's time for? Oh boy. Wildlife. 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 Fire away. All right. Uh, not many wildlife shots this week. You couldn't see while the song was playing uh, because this isn't a visual medium, but I was throwing up the horns. <laughs> For my girl, Pat B. Patty B. Patty B. Smith. Horses. Why? That's a pet that's a pet that's a Pat B. Tom P. collab. <laughs> Patty Benatar and um Fuck, I forgot what you said already. I know it. Tommy Patty. Tommy Patty Benatar. Okay. So cool. there's a there was a monkey and then there was a there were some birds that happened during a sunrise. That was were they anon- were they anonymous birds as a result of this? <sighs> yes, I didn't look it up. This is look. This isn't the only. This isn't the first show uh, set on an island that's going to have some unsolved mysteries. I don't know what you're but referring you know, to. It's it's about the journey, Jake. I don't know. I don't know what you're referring to. I Jake and I Jake and I only for this one wildlife shot we're watching this together. And when the birds flew away, I turned to him and said, Guys, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> and then Jeff Probst walked up and was like, Korong Cambodia. It's in, it's in the name of the show. Um, so then they go to tribal council. And this is Nick and Michelle's first tribal council. They had to dip their torches into the fire to get fire. Yeah, the uh, the, the beauty tribe... Never faced elimination. Yeah. And the first um, tribal at, after the merge, they didn't have because because of the ousting of uh, Neil. Yeah, Neil, Neil just went home. Yeah. Um, 
Michelle says she's excited to actually be at Tribal because she hasn't really had a chance to show her ability as a player. Then Nick reveals to everyone that they're planning to split the vote. Why? That's a dumb move, Nick. It's it's seriously the the uh, survivor equivalent of of leaving someone over a pit of sharks and just assuming they're going to get killed. Yes, of course it's going to come back on you. Mm-hmm. You have to know that they died. <laughs> uh, Jason and Scott believe that their alliance of seven is strong. And the, mm, another thing that made me mad about this episode. Uh, Je- Jeff asks everybody about the hidden immunity idol because still no one has played one. And Ty reveals the idea of the super idol. He played it cool a couple episodes ago. Where he's like, yeah, there's no idol. And now he's like, oh no, there's not only an idol, but like a fucking crazy twist on the idol. There's, so, okay, there, there is some stuff that I read on this that, uh... Ty had talked to those guys about voting out Nick or whoever, and I guess he wanted to vote Jason out, mm-hmm. and I think he was trying to intimate to them, because he's the one that voted, one person votes for Jason yeah. in uh, in here, and he's the one that did it. I think he's he was trying to intimate to them, if he hadn't already mentioned something, that Jason's immunity idol could be rendered uh, moot. Yeah. If they had a super idol, basically. <laughs> Well, I didn't appreciate it. But I think it. also, I think Ty also thought that they had an idol that he could combine with it, which they didn't. Like Neil's Neil's yeah, old idol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking speaking of which, because Neil obviously exited the show because he died, I thought it was a little <laughs> tasteless that they exhumed his corpse for the jury. Yeah, they reanimated him so he could make one vote later on. Um, so the mention of the super idol takes Julia by surprise. And Debbie tries to take advantage of that and tries to convince her to make a move. Um, And Scott tells Probst that he can't imagine the the vote going any other way than as predicted. So what you're saying is Scott is confident. (laughs) Scott is confident, not as confident as Nick, though. Yeah, uh, fortunately for him, he he does not have that Nick level of idiotic uh, delusional confidence. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, they, they go to vote, nobody plays an idol, and then Jeff counts the votes. Aubrey, Debbie, Nick, Aubrey, Jason, Nick, 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 Nick. Uh, Nick gets How many, votes. how many times did you, did you watch the reading of the votes on this? Did you watch it more I, than I once? I didn't watch it more than once, no. I, Do yourself a favor and go back and just, just watch read Nick's the face. difference, read the difference in Nick's face, because it. It gets, he has this, like, the first time he sees his name, he has this weird, like, almost smug but really stupid look on his face, like, oh, they voted for me? What? Oh, no me. way. And the, se- the second time, like, oh, oh, I mean, this, is, this isn't funny. And the third time, what the hell? Like, what's going on? And the fourth time, just de- horrible, just pure defeat. I, um, they always edit it together, or, or um, I know they place the, the votes in a certain order, so it's the most dramatic. I wish that they had shown all the other votes before any of the Nick votes, and then they just uh, read all the Nick votes as, like, a marathon. So it's just like, he's riding high, riding high, and Nick, 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 Nick. (laughs) Aubrey, Debbie, Aubrey, oh, shit, it's definitely one of them, and then everybody for Nick. Oh, that would have been great. That would be... That would be great. Uh, someone on the AV Club comments, uh, I, I couldn't find a clip of this, so I thought maybe you would be able to explain it to me, compared this to, like, in terms of his reaction to when someone named Earl on a previous season blindsided an alliance called the Four, was it the Four Horsewomen? Um, no, that's a wrestling thing. Uh, four Horsemen? <laughs> that's also a wrestling thing. thing and a biblical Just thing. Like- uh, no, that was, um, I don't think I watched that episode, or that season. Um, what's that, Fiji, maybe? This has been another old-school Survivor roundup. <laughs> what happened? Who knows? Who knows? I watched the early seasons, and I've watched the most recent seasons. The middle five to ten seasons, I missed, because I was watching The Office, and DVR didn't exist yet. Uh, that's why I stopped watching Survivor, originally, for that for those three years. Because you guys didn't have, like, OG TiVo or whatever? Yeah, um... And I don't think streaming was really a thing then, so I was like, well, they're both on Thursday nights, and I like The Office more than Survivor. 
Uh, so I'm gonna. Also, it was like I, think... I was at that age where I was like, "Oh, reality TV is trash, and that's not cool." I'm gonna watch a cool hit sitcom on NBC. I mean, it was the right choice. I think by about season three of The Office, you could watch the episodes on NBC.com. Probably, but they yeah. were pre- pretty be- pretty poor quality at the yeah. time. I think. Um, these days, I watch all of my television on the internet. Or I don't even the... own a television. <laughs> other than that, I do. <laughs> and that I do, I just don't don't really use it. Um, it's just inconvenient. Always got to play video games on something. Yeah. Uh, so. Let's uh, let's 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 get into the predictions. Who's who? Who you still you still in that Sydney camp? Uh, I I would still pick Sydney to win. Uh, for my for my four, I th- I think it'd be nice for us to have, you know, like a I could call it bracketology. Mm. Like there's a guy named Joe Lunardi for ESPN.com who projects during the college basketball regular season what the eventual bracket is going to look like, who's in and who's out for the tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh. So, I will say, my my first out in the bracket is Scott, because Scott was in my Final Four last time. I don't think he's in my Final Four anymore. Okay. Uh, I would go Sydney, Ty, Julia is in my Final Four. Okay. I thought that she, I think she seems non-threatening to people, but has really made some smart plays and is, you have to pay attention to her, but I think that she's a pretty crafty player. Okay. And and I will say she's like reasonably athletic. I think she might be able to win an immunity challenge okay. at some point. We'll see. So and I, I now I'm trying to think of my fourth who's left. I want to say Aubrey but I'm worried that she's going to she still has that so infection. She's... I'm worried I'm worried about that. Um, oh yeah, I I read before the season premiered that three people are medically evacuated, but I also heard that two of those medical evacuations were after they got voted out, um, which is an untrue rumor. So I don't know if there's a third person that's going to go, but I guess we'll see. Um, my winner, I'm, I'm I'm still I'm still rooting for Sydney. Um, next immunity. Who who you, who you who you? Got? Oh, and for for the for the last of my final four, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll say uh, I'll say Michelle. I think Michelle might be able to. Okay. Yeah. To surprise me. Yeah, I think she's a solid player. Um, next immunity winner. <sighs> it's Ty. I mean, if they keep going the way they have with these balance challenges, I'm inclined to say Ty. Okay. Okay. I can see that. Um, I'm thinking Aubrey though. I think her time has come. She's really not bad at the immunity challenges. Yeah. She's she's been around. I mean, she was, I think, fourth last week, and I think she was about fifth this time. Yeah, she's a she's a contender. Um, I know you said Julia's in your final four, but I'm thinking she's going to be the next one out. I'd... I I just dis- I disagree. Okay. Um, so yeah, points now. It's all tied up. 3-3. Three, three. Thomas oh, Scott. Oh, cool, cool. Don't let me pick my next out so that I don't get a point next week. <laughs> let's, uh, let's just finish up the show right now. Looks like just, we're just done. Just wrap it up. Don't, we, sorry, we, uh, I'm hearing the music. We don't have time for this. <laughs> um. Next out, who you got? Boy. Who, who you voting for? I mean, it, it, it looks like it's going all girl voting pattern unless... If they splinter, then I could maybe see Julie going out, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to say Joe. Okay. I, I could see that. All right, fine. You got your prediction in. Good for you. You know what? Wait. Wait. No, that's... No? I don't think that's going to be the case. Okay. I think he's so non-threatening they won't... Uh, Scott. He's got... He's Because they because they know Jason has an idol. Jason, Jason and Ty, I think, would both play their idol for him, though. So I think he, I think Scott's sitting oh. pretty still. God, I hadn't considered that. Yep. Um, then I, I guess if those guys are all safe, then maybe, uh, maybe Joe again. I guess I, I gotta stick with Joe. Yeah. Um, all right. I think I think some points will be won this this coming week. Um, Thomas predicted Nicholas going out correctly last week, so the the score is tied at three points each. Um. Let's get on to some other notes real quick. We're an hour and five minutes into this episode. It's a long one. Remember when we talked about beverages for 20 minutes? 
That was fun. It was essential. <laughs> this episode is precisely as long as it needs to be. Yes. I'm not cutting anything out. Um, 23 days until the challenge. Rivals 3. You pumped? You excited? No, I'm watching Survivor. <laughs> All right. Well, I feel like if I was eating some filet mignon and I'm like, are you excited for this hamburger you're going to get? <laughs> I, I, like, I no, guess. I'm, I'm good. I'm just trying to enjoy what I have right now. Yeah, but what about the future? Um, speaking of the challenge, let me remember to say Bananas on Survivor on social media with that hashtag Bananas on Survivor. Any more, uh, any more chatter from the, uh, the challenge group? There has not been any more chatter from the challenge group. Um, there's a lot of annoying people on, in that group, and it shows up in my newsfeed a lot. Also, it's the real world group, not the challenge group anymore. Uh, so, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but... I wish that was the actual name of the group. <laughs> the real world group, not the challenge group anymore. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> hey, listeners, tell just tell one friend about this show, and then they can listen to it as well. And then we'll have twice as many listeners. My mom, my for dad, just, for Thomas's just mom, one Thomas's li- dad, uh, all of our grandparents. <laughs> for just one listen a day, you can really boost our egos. Yes. And isn't that rewarding in and of itself? You're not paying for this unless you want to. Yeah, if you, uh, if in you which want case, to. email us and we'll start, we'll start, a, if we can somehow monetize this, I would love to. Let's just but, start a PayPal account. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we, if, if we... Uh, putting the cart before the horse here, but if you love our podcast and you get a bunch of other people to listen to our podcast and we get enough people that want to pay us that we can start, here's, start a Patreon, maybe that'll happen. Who here's knows? what I'm proposing. Uh, we're a public radio this shit. If you give us $10 a week for f- minimum five weeks, we will send you a survivor buff from any season of your We choosing. will send you a handwritten thing. Sorry, about. sorry. Not any season of Survivor. A season of our show, Did You Watch Survivor Last Night? And a handwritten thank you. Uh, de- Dude, you give us one dollar. No, if you give us three dollars, I'll write you a handwritten note. I'll then I'll send it to Thomas so he can sign it, and then he'll send it to you. Also, you'll need to give we us won't our make, address. We won't be making any money. We'll be spending it all on postage. <laughs> that's so. that's why I upped it to three dollars because I think you can still get three uh, stamp for under three dollars, right? Wait, you can give yeah, us but stamp we still got to pay for. Th- Who's paying for the stationery, Jake? You? Oof. I was just going to use a, a blank piece of paper, blank piece of notebook paper and a notebook I already own. Um, Any, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's really the thought that counts. It was made with love. This is uh, uh, going off the rails. Uh, we have a Facebook. So, yeah, no, Twitter, no, no. Yep. Follow all that shit. Yeah, give us give us a five-star review. Yep. Email us like Jeff Probst does every week. Did you watch last night at gmail.com? <laughs> If if you don't feel like thinking of an actual review for the five star review, we can just go boilerplate. I'll give it to you right now. Just say this is my favorite podcast. I like it better than all of the other podcasts. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> you heard it here first. It's great. You should listen. Word for word, all of that. Even when I said yeah, put that in the middle. Um, all right, Thomas, you got any more beverages to talk about? Uh, how how do we uh, how do we feel about Squirt? I, I like it. I dig Some squirt. people go. I dig squirt. I'm in. I'm into squirt. All right, we've settled this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, right. as as always, as always, have a great summer. Deuces. My life is brilliant. My love is pure. I saw an angel. Of that I'm sure. She smiled at me on the subway. She was with another man. But I won't lose no sleep on that. I've got a plan You're beautiful You're beautiful You're beautiful It's true I saw your face In a crowded place And I don't know what to do Cause I'll never Dick arms. Yes, she caught my eye as we walked on by. She could see from my face that I was flying high, and I don't think that I'll see her again. But we shared.
I will never.